So welcome back guys to another video and today I'm doing a review on Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha. Now this is a collection of six intense shooters from the folks at Psycho and I have to give a big shout and a huge thank you to the folks at NIS of America for sending a review copy to the studio. But the most important thing is what games come in this collection? Let's check those out. Striker 1945, the game that started it all with this whole Psycho Shooter genre among the arcade fans. You can pick between six characters and planes and they all have their own mechanics and but overall you have three attacks. You have a normal shot, a charge shot, and a bomb that clears the screen of minor enemies and bullets. Both normal and charge shot can be strengthened by grabbing power-ups and extra bombs can be collected. Gold bars, which are found by destroying certain buildings or enemies, can be collected for bonus points. It really laid the foundation of most of the games we're going to be talking about in this collection. Now, Striker 1945 2 is everything you loved about the first game, but it really amped it up. It's a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed this a lot more than this previous entry. But as Strikers 1945-3 where things get really good, taking place 54 years after the previous entries, you now can control more modern aircrafts. And the latest feature is a technical bonus. During a boss battle, you have this blue orb that can be revealed as a weak point in order to get a quick kill. The fighter plane must be extremely close to the orb until it turns red and firing the orb while getting close to it. Once the fighter plane embraces the orb, the boss is destroyed quickly and adds points for a technical bonus. However, revealing the orb from the boss will only take one time to unleash an attack pattern. You have to memorize the attack pattern and use a bomb to dissolve all bullets and while in fact shoot the orb while getting close for a quick victory. Soul Divine Sword of Darkness is what I call the ambitious title in the collection. It's more of a fantasy feel with even some RPG elements. And the three characters you choose have their own style and weaknesses. And instead of bombs, you get spells that can take up MP. You also get melee attacks for short range moves. And overall, after playing Strikers 1945 1 through 3, this was a breath of fresh air. Despite the game may not hold up as much as some of the other games in this collection because the controls can be rather clunky. It's also a pretty short game. I beat this game in about like 20 minutes. I could only imagine playing two player mode. You could definitely beat this game in about 10 minutes alone. Dragon Blades is a rather departure from the usual Psycho style that flirts more with the bullet hell genre and gives you a third button for control. This may sound silly, but it's actually pretty awesome because you can now Dragon Shoot, which enables you to dismount from your fearsome winged steed, lunge Nick forward into a devastating attack, and it will remain stationary on that spot delivering punishment until you press the button once more so you can return to his master. Since your knight also has wings, you can fly solo and the dragons will be utterly invincible. And this is your best strategy to deal with not only the bosses, but some of the regular foes as well. My advice, purple is the color of death. So just worry about doing your best to avoid any shape of purple hurling towards your knight of choice while parking your dragon face first into the biggest source of danger on the screen. And while touching enemies will not kill you, you will be penalized with a power down. Every knight also has a spell cast by charging up their primary attack button. But unlike the dragon shoot, they have a mana cost, so you have to use them sparingly. Zero Gunner 2. This takes all the psycho elements into 3D and actually has a multi-directional shoot mechanic. 
What's interesting is turning the ship isn't done with a second analog stick like a, say, twin stick shooter, but normal buttons, and to be honest, it's getting some getting used to, but honestly, I find it kind of brilliant because it adds some intense bullet battles. The graphics are in crisp HD and has that classic late 90s feel that I honestly love more than anything. I also love the boss battles, they're epic. Seeing a vehicle transform into mechs in this 3D world is the epitome of the Japanese experience. Now some of the display options are pretty interesting because you can add scan lines if uh, that tickles your fancy. Me personally, I feel like it's a weird retro placebo effect. I feel like when I'm playing an HD uh, retro game, it just never looks right with scan lines. It has to be on a CRT, but that's just me. But if you want that option, you have that. Also, if you're playing it on the Switch, like I am, you can actually flip the Switch vertically and play it in the respectable aspect ratio. And, gives you more real estate it feels awesome I, I actually love putting it in kickstand mode and playing it vertically and, and just playing you know strikers 1945 on the go I can share the joy cons with my friends we can play multiplayer it's freaking awesome now going to the things that I don't care for in this collection and it, it's kind of minor but I wish there was a little bit more to this collection what I mean by this is I wish we had some sort of like liner notes uh, you know soundtracks you know, something that if you were to buy this collection digitally, you wouldn't feel gimped because there is a special collector's edition that comes with soundtracks, it comes with an art book, all the bells and whistles that you would expect from any sort of collection. But if you're just buying the vanilla physical or if you're just buying a digital, you're just getting six games and that's it. And for the price tag of $39.99, I don't think a whole lot of folks are going to justify that. Uh, me personally, I, I love all the games on it. But I really wish there was a little bit more of gaming history because I would have loved to learn more about Psycho because even going on Wikipedia trying to look up the company, the only thing they said is they were offshoot of the video uh, system and they were responsible for putting out Aero Fighters. That's pretty much all they said on Wikipedia. So overall, I'll give this game a solid 8 out of 10. I feel like it's a really good compilation, especially if you're like me and you love shoot 'em ups and this is definitely something to check out. and. What do you guys think? Is this something you want to put under your radar on the Nintendo Switch? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And what are some of your favorite Psycho shooters? Mine personally, I love Gunbird too. That's one of my favorite shooters of all time. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and also hit that bell for notifications so you're notified on all future content coming out on this channel. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, happy gaming.